Before moving on to the main topic of this video, I would like to discuss with you the destruction of the 13th Inero American Abrams tank. Just a few hours ago, the Russian military published new footage showing the destruction of another American tank, in the Avdiivka direction of the front. The footage clearly shows how a Russian FPV drone strikes an American tank that was moving along a country road, along a forest belt. Watching these shots, you can see that the Abrams tank was seriously damaged after the drone hit the turret of this combat vehicle. At the same time, it can be noted that after the first hit, the tank crew did not leave this combat vehicle. This indicates that the tankers were most likely killed, or seriously injured. Later, the Russian military launched a second strike on the US tank. A few minutes later, a third Russian FPV drone flew up to the Abrams tank, and began slowly circling around this combat vehicle, at a distance of 2-3 meters. And at this very moment, the operators of the Russian FPV drones realized that they had destroyed not only the Abrams tank, but also its combat crew. The fact that the combat crew of the Abrams tank is poorly protected from enemy shells, missiles, and drones, was also confirmed by Ukrainian tankers during a recent interview with American journalists from CNN. According to them, the turret of the Abrams tank is poorly protected, and the crew of this combat vehicle very often dies after a direct hit by enemy drones or projectiles. By the way, this interview of Ukrainian tankers caused anger in the United States. Back then, many American military officers accused the Ukrainian tankers of unprofessionalism and bias. In the United States, many declared that it was not an American tank that performed poorly on the battlefield but Ukrainian tankers, who could not properly control this combat vehicle. At the same time, it is worth noting that experts from the Pentagon and NATO, officially reported that during the entire period of hostilities, Russia lost 22 units of T-90M Prorif tanks in Ukraine. Even considering the fact that Western experts have significantly overestimated these figures, it becomes clear that, unlike Western tanks, the Russian tank has proved itself worthy on the battlefield. The fact is that since 2022, Russia has produced 420 units of T-90M Prorif tanks, losing only 22 units of these combat vehicles on the battlefield. Thus, even considering the fact that the Pentagon and NATO experts significantly overestimated the loss rates of Russian tanks on the battlefield, the total percentage of losses of these combat vehicles does not exceed 10%. For comparison, as of June 13, 2024, the Ukrainian army lost 35 German Leopard tanks, 13 American Abrams tanks, and two British Challenger II tanks. At the same time, it is worth noting that, unlike American and German tanks, the armed forces of Ukraine does not use British tanks on the battlefield. Thus, it becomes clear that the Russian T-90M Prorov tank is the most combat-ready and tenacious tank in the theater of operations in Ukraine. In many ways, this became possible due to the fact that Russian engineers installed a new generation Arena M dynamic protection system on the T-90 tank. As it turned out, this system effectively protects the tank from anti-tank shaped charges, various projectiles, anti-tank guided missiles, and also against kamikaze drones. There are dozens of videos on the web, where Ukrainian FPV drones hit the T-90 tank several times. However, despite these hits, the Russian tank did not lose its speed, and continued to destroy enemy targets. This complex has its own built-in radar station that, in non-stop mode, tracks rocket-propelled grenades, anti-tank missiles, and FPV drones, fired by the enemy at a combat vehicle. 
If this system sees a threat to the tank, it fires small explosive ammunition toward each target, as a result of which enemy shells, grenades, missiles, and even drones, cannot cause critical damage to the tank. Unfortunately, not all Russian combat vehicles are equipped with this protection yet. However, sources in the Russian military department claim that by the end of this year, not only all T-14 Armada and T-90 Prorif tanks, but also T-72 and T-80 will receive a new generation Arena M dynamic protection system. Meanwhile, on the night of June 12, Russia launched another massive missile strike on the territory of Ukraine. This time, the Dnipropetrovsk, Poltava, Odessa, Sumy, and Kiev regions were subjected to massive strikes. It is reliably known that during this attack, Russia used dozens of cruise and hypersonic missiles. In particular, we are talking about cruise missiles KH-55, KH-555, KH-101, and Kinsol hypersonic missiles. So, in the Dnipropetrovsk region, in the city of Pavlograd, Russian missiles hit and destroyed two military depots with Western weapons, which were supposed to go to the grouping of the armed forces of Ukraine in Pokrovsk. Later, in the same region, Russian missiles attacked the city of Novomoskovsk. It is reliably known that Russian missiles hit and destroyed a local oil depot in the western part of that city. In the Poltava region, in the city of Mirarod, the Russian military attacked the Mirarod Air Base. As a result of this attack, Russian missiles destroyed three MiG-29 fighter jets, as well as one S-300 air defense system. In the Sumy region, Russian missiles hit and destroyed three energy infrastructure facilities, leaving 16 settlements without electricity. In Odessa and Kiev, Kinsel hypersonic missiles hit and destroyed two classified military installations of the armed forces of Ukraine. It is reported that these were decision-making centers, where Ukrainian and NATO officers coordinated the work of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kharkiv direction of the front, and also developed a plan of attacks on the Crimean Peninsula. The fact that the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine airbrushed all objects out of all photos at the place of work of firefighters indicates that the destroyed facilities were indeed classified and of strategic importance to the armed forces of Ukraine. Sources in the Russian military department claim that as a result of this missile attack, about 40 high-ranking officers of the armed forces of Ukraine, along with officers of armies of NATO countries, were killed.